Today's project is going to involve some friction welding on the lathe, but before we get to that, let's look at the part that needs to be made. This is the handle shaft off of a beaver table saw. Yes, the beaver table saw was made in Canada. And one of the first things that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cut the hole to length that we're actually going to weld to it. Now, I could have made a whole new shaft for this, but this was just more of a fun project and a good way to demonstrate what we can do with friction welding. Now, the first bolt I cut out actually wound up in where the holes are, so I had to get a different bolt. It was going to line up a little bit away from those little holes that are there. Now, I cut a taper on both sides of the shaft, and I don't think this was absolutely necessary. And a little bit into the future, I'm going to experiment with perhaps doing some different shapes and techniques on welding stuff together and then testing it. You'll have to stay tuned for the next video on that. Now, it's going to come down to your feed and speed. I'm going to increase the lathe speed to about 1,000 to 1,500 RPM. The lathe has to be really humming to actually weld this stuff together, or you're going to be doing this for quite a while, and it'll end up just eating everything away. This is a bearing chuck that you see me using, and I'm actually just going to end up holding this by hand. Now, I, I don't necessarily recommend you hold it by hand, but it does work, and as soon as it starts to weld together, you just let go of it, and it starts to spin. One thing I will say is, Rigidity is key for this, because you'll notice as it starts to weld together, it's going to start moving around on the shocking. There's quite a bit of force and friction there, pushing it away from itself. Now that it's welded together, I'm just going to remove the chuck. I'll give it a quick spin. You can see it's probably out maybe about 10 thou, and that's due to rigidity, and it kind of trying to walk off a little bit to the upper left. Another improvement on the technique for next time is I'm going to hold that chuck a little bit longer and make it weld a little bit more and mushroom out so that I have a little bit more to machine off. Now let's take it over to the milling machine and line everything up and drill those two little holes. Now because I just did another job on the milling machine, I know this vise is dialed in. So I'm just going to find center between these jaws with that bolt in there. And this is pretty easy with the wigger. I'm just going to zero to one side. Then I'm going to lift it up and roll over to the other side and find the edge there. And then it just comes down to math and science. Now, I'm pretty sure I should be able to divide this in my head, but I always like to double check my measurements. And I jump on the phone quick and see what the measurements are. Then, of course, it spits out the correct number. Now that we got the correct number, I'm just going to roll over to center and then over to the other end. And I'm going to use a wiggler to find the edge of that gear. Now, remember, we did a blueprint off of this. So I'm going to find the edge of that. And then I'm going to roll all the way over to where my measurements are, and then I'm just going to peck those two holes with the center drill. One thing I will add to note is I kind of got lucky a little bit with where my threads start on this welding job, because it's pretty hard to actually estimate where it's going to end up when you're done welding the shaft together. And looking back on it now, perhaps those cones did help me a little bit, because the edges of the cones kind of lined up where I wanted it to stop. And because the material started getting bigger there, it actually slowed down the welding job until I got to that edge, and it got me pretty close to where we wanted. Now that we got our holes packed with the center drill, I'm just going to grab an eighth of an inch and drill a couple holes for those roll pins. Now would be a good time to talk to you about the cost of emission. I'd really appreciate it to get your feedback on what you thought of this video in the comments below. Not only is it going to help others figure out what's going to work or isn't going to work, it's also going to help me figure out what's going to work better and what I can show for other videos in the future. Now let's finish drilling this hole up and take it out of the milling machine and have a look at it. Also, before you click off, you might want to check out the last couple seconds of the video because I've got a test weld in the back of the video as well.